Can you hear me now? If somebody could let me know, that would be fabulous. I can hear. Oh, great. Thanks, Lisa. Um, not sure how Facebook is going or not Facebook. YouTube is going. Um, if somebody is on YouTube and can let me know with that, that would be fabulous. This is all new technology to me. So we're going to get started today. So we're going to talk a little bit um, about Brusho. And I don't know if everybody that's on knows what Brusho is. Brusho is a powder. It's very fine, minute particles. And I always suggest people when you're starting off, oh, I'm echoing. No comments on YouTube. Oh, no. Um, okay. All right. Well, keep letting me know, Lisa. I can see the chats in the Zoom. I can't see chats on YouTube. So you'll, you'll need to... Okay, YouTube is a little bit behind. Okay. Um, with Brusho, Brusho is very fine. And I always tell people, don't take the tops off until you know um, how to really use them. I always suggest people put a push pin or a pin in the top. Um, when I first got these, and these are probably five, six years old, I started using them in the center. As I moved on and just uh, recently, I started moving the hole over to the side. I think it's a little easier to shake and to tap this way than holding it up and tapping it. Um, but I want to take the top off of one of these if I can. Just to show you how fine these little crystals are. So can, I don't know if you can see how fine and minute those crystals are. And you can see some of them have fallen onto the board. And if I use my spray bottle, just that tiny little amount bursts into a ton of color. So hopefully you can see that it's clear enough. And then I always use a towel to mop up after myself. But that's why I always suggest for people, um, be careful. I am rather clumsy at times. I would have, I would spill these. I would, um, they would be a mess. So I always suggest to people, leave your tops on. Use a push pin till you get more comfortable with them. Then if you want to take the top off, I know there's a lot of people that will dip a brush in or um, like a skewer and they'll dip it in and then tap to get a fine amount of the crystals. So that's what we're going to talk about today is um, the Brusho crystals. I'm using just a regular spray bottle. This I picked up at just a like a big lot, just a cheap spray bottle. We're going to start off, we're going to do color swatches of all of the colors and we're going to try and go through as many of the colors tonight as we can. Next week we'll carry on. When they're dry, we're going to go back in and see how they lift, which colors are actual staining, which colors we can lift back to or close to the white of the paper. Um, some of them you'll notice they don't lift as much these are very staining and they're just so much fun because they burst into so much color I always keep a color wheel handy and what I wanted to do today is we're going to start off with yellow the same way I lay my swatches out I start with the, the yellows the warm colors move into then 
my cooler colors and then into the browns, the gray, and the, the black. So Lisa, do we have any um, questions yet? Sorry about the YouTube not having the chat available. I'll have to work on that and see. If you want to move over to Zoom where there is the chat room, that's on the fineartcafe.academy. You can um, just type in the Fine Art Cafe Academy. You'll get a link in your search engine. Go over there and then click on the um, Zoom tab and then you can enter that way and we'll have a chat. Again, I'm sorry about that. Such a learning curve. So let's get started. If we don't have any questions yet, we no will questions move on. Yet. Um, and there's no way to comment on the YouTube. The paper that there. I'm going to be using for these swatches and I took a full size sheet broke it down in half, then quarters, and then did the quarters into quarters. And I've got 32 squares out of that full size sheet. There are 34 colors of brush out, so I'll need to um, do a couple more of these squares. This is Stonehenge Aqua Cold Press 140 pound watercolor paper. It's my favorite to use with brush out. Um, Stonehenge Aqua, it really holds up well to the water. You'll get a little bit of um, wrinkling on the 140 pound, but the 300 pound is really, really sturdy. But I really love this paper. This is my top choice to go to when I'm using brush out. The next would be Bockingford, and that's a UK paper, and then um, Saunders. Those two work really, really well with um, Brusho also. But I absolutely love Stonehenge Aqua, um, their watercolor paper. This is cold pressed, so there's a little bit of tooth to the paper. Um, for those of you who are new to this, medium and to watercolor painting if we have anybody out there. Hot press paper is very slick. It has no tooth. What they call the tooth is the texture, the bumps in the paper. So hot press is a very smooth. Cold press has minimal tooth to it where it collects the colors and then rough is extremely rough paper. And you'll see, you can actually feel the real textures in it, and you'll see where the pigment flows into those little grooves, and, and it collects in there, and when it dries, you have more um, of a pigment in certain areas. It's fun to use if you want to have a lot of texture. So that's the paper we're going to be using. I have my 32 sheets that we're going to be using tonight. And that, as I said, we're going to start off with our yellows. We have in the full set of 34, you have lemon, yellow, sunburst lemon, and yellow ochre. So please try and mark, and there's no really, when I cut these, I can't tell you which is the front or the back with Stonehenge Aqua paper. Um, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to write on the back. This is my lemon. And I'm going to break it into thirds, the same as I did on these. And the top half I'm going to spray with water and then sprinkle it. The middle will dilute it. And then the bottom part will sprinkle the color on and then spray it or vice versa we can you can do it either way so let's start with the lemon and just for let's start this way we'll sprinkle first on the top part as you can see there's not a lot of pigment there and just lightly spray it. 
Now you can see I have some carryover where I have cross-contamination of some blue. I don't think the blue is probably in that pot. It's probably either on the pin or it was on the top of the lid. But I like to get those places where the other colors come through. I think it adds a lot of dimension and a lot of different color into a painting when that happens. So let's wipe this off and set that aside. That was our lemon. Let's do yellow now. And what you're going to see also is that a lot of the colors are very close. Again, that's not a lot of pigment that's been dropped down there. And we're going to spray. And you can see this has more orange in it than the other. Now I want to let those dry before we move on to um, diluting and going in. Kind of let those kind of just dry. This one's kind of wet in that area. You can blot if you want. Now what I would love to see is if anyone else is going to um, do these. I think this is helpful really when you start off painting and especially with the brush -o, is to always kind of do your swatches to know what colors you have, to know how they react on different papers. This one is Sunburst Lemon. Again, just lightly sprinkle with brush -o, a little, little goes a long, long way. So Lisa, you have a color journal where you did your swatches. So as you can see, they're pretty close. But when you do, um, when you're we're actually working on a painting, um, this one comes out darker than the sunburst. The sunburst is seems to be a lot brighter. The next color we're going to do is yellow ochre. Let me write that on here. You can see the crystals are a darker brown. But watch as I spray this, what happens? This is where it gets into a lot of fun with brush -o. You can see the colors. There's orange, there's some greenish color in there, there's browns. Each pot is made up of a lot of different colors, which is to me so exciting because you get those colors where they show up in random places. It's very, very organic looking. It's so much fun to use. Let's put that one aside. Okay, let's move on into our reds and oranges. Hi Nancy, how are you? So this one is orange. And again, the higher you hold it, the more spread that you're going to get. As you're closer, you don't get quite the spread.
and you can see how the orange has some of the yellow in it. It's so pretty. They're so vibrant in color. Let's move my swatches out of the way. So we have those over here. This is a real fun color, this sandstone. Now you're starting to get more into the browns into this color. It's still a warm color, but the oranges now are turning in more where you have some of the browns. If you notice over here, and I don't know if I can hit that, you can see now where this one has a little bit of blue also in it. You can start to see those popping out. And again, that one was sandstone. So let's do one more. Well, I have two more over here. So let's do those before we start mixing. Now what I wanna do is continue working on with these until we have all of the colors done. And then come back and we're going to start applying our knowledge of how the colors react, what colors are in one of the pots you have your color swatches of the colors that you have if you don't have all 34 of them. Then we're going to create a painting. And I really like the, um, it's kind of a landscape with the road going up and the stones. I think maybe we'll do that one as we progress through. So this one is called Gamboge. And I think you'll be surprised with the colors in this one. In this one, you have a lot of the yellows and that bright orange. Patricia says she just has a small kit, but it's a start. You like to watch me write the colors. Oh, is it backwards for you? <laughs> oh, no. So we're going to set that one over there and let it dry. And then the last one for tonight that we're going to, um, you know, do just with the sprinkling and spraying and let them dry in this group is vermilion. And this one I use a lot. So maybe I should have had the colors already written down before. <laughs> that way it wouldn't be backwards for you. But you'd be seeing them backwards. Now, if you've noticed, this one, the crystals are very fine compared to like Gamboge or Sandstone. Those crystals seem to be a little bigger. but you still get that organic, vibrant look in the colors. When I'm doing trees, I love to use this and you get that pop of that bright orangey red in there. I am using Stonehenge Aqua 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It's my go-to paper for brush -o. I love this paper. Um, it's so resilient. It takes a lot of abuse and it'll flatten back out. You may get a little bit of wrinkling in it when it's, it's really wet if you're using a lot of water on it. But this is my go-to, my most favorite paper for um, doing brush -o. and actually for even 
doing um, just traditional watercolors. All right, so those are the colors that we wanted to start off with. Now you're going to see kind of I'm a really messy um, painter and this was our lemon. And how I do, let me find my lemon, how I work, and this is, I call it a waffle board. It's plastic. I can clean it off if it gets stained. When I taught workshops for seniors in um, like nursing homes and um, assisted living, I always use this and I'd bring them home then because they would be just covered with colors. I would bring them home and just wash them all down and if they really get stained then I can take bleach and, and wash that off. I like to mix just a little, put it on my board. I'm using, this is a two size two mop brush. It holds a lot of water. These are some of my favorite brushes. I have a bucket of water next to me. And I'm just going to mix that up. And I just want to do a line with it. And then what I want to do is bleed that down so I can see how light I can actually get that. I don't want to bleed it all the way down because I still want to leave a spot where I'm going to spray water, then sprinkle the brush o in so I can see the difference in how it reacts. With brusho, it is so organic that doing it in different ways, spraying first, then adding the brusho, or sprinkling the brusho and then spraying, you get different looks. And that's why I think the swatches are so important to do. All right. And then this one is my yellow, and I have my yellow here. And it doesn't take much. And again, put my first coat on. And then I'm just going to bleed it down. Set that aside. Clean up my mess. And this one is my sunburst, which this is one of my really kind of favorite of the yellows, I think. It's a very vibrant, bright yellow. wash it down. Just kind of bleed it down. Let me clean this up. Ah, moving everything around. Look how this one, how organic this one is drying. I love that. I love the textures in there and that's my yellow ochre. Now someone did tell me, and I'm trying to remember who it was. It was an artist in the UK. Um, Allison, maybe Allison Foote, was telling me that she loved the um, yellow ochre and when she used up her pot and had to buy another pot, it actually came a little different in the color. The mixture was a little different. Now, I've not experienced that, but I'm still using the same pots of color that I bought six years ago, so it, it lasts forever. Um, what is the same as Coplast? That's what I've been using with my alcohol inks, gel plate, and now brush -o. Um Coplast, what is that, Lori? Can you tell? Tell me what that what you're referring to. This is yeah, my orange. Was, my orange is over here, and I scatter them all around. So, are you able to hear me? 
I've started doing colored pencils. Um, Brusho has lasted, like I said, these pots of Brusho are my original pots. Now, colored pencil, oh my gosh, it just drives me crazy because I go through so many of them. Oh, this, the, the, I call it um, gator board or waffle board. It's a plastic board that has the, the holes that run through it. I don't know. Yeah, it's like plastic cardboard. I use this because it cleans up so easily. Um, when I did, I was telling him earlier, when I did the workshops for the senior citizens, and I would bring the boards home and they would just be covered with color and these would wash off and um, I can actually take bleach if they stained and clean them up. So yeah, I don't know the, the true name of it, Gator Board. I just get them, Amazon has them, uh, Dick Blick, any of the big art stores have them. Have, and it's a full sheet and I just cut them in half to use them. So this one is their sandstone. And again, a little goes a very, very long way. Let's put just a touch more. So again, what we're going to do for the um, people that have come on a little later we're going to work at our different colors do swatches for all of the colors and then we're going to do an actual painting online so you kind of hang in with me but look how organic this is as it dries that's what I absolutely love about brusho is is how organic it is now I probably could have gone a little darker on that in fact let's go just a hair darker just to get a little more color. And then bleed it down. Because as I said, what we want to do is after these are dry, and they won't be dry enough to do this tonight, but we're going to use bleach and put a streak through it. And then I'm also going to be using a product that's called Melton. And it's a baby bottle sterilizer from the UK. And yes, yeah, sandstone just, it does, it has that, that brown in it. It's just, they're gorgeous colors. And my gamboge, this is another one that I really, really like. just a little darker. And bleed it down. But if you were doing a fall scene, look at the colors in there for fall leaves. They're just gorgeous. And then I have one over here, and this is my vermilion, which is just truly bright and beautiful and it just makes me happy when I look at this color. So there are the colors that we've done so far. So I don't know, what's your favorite color? What, what's everybody thinking so far? I don't know if you can see them all. What, which color does everybody prefer? Gamboge and Stanstone? They're just, I don't know, there's something about the bright colors like the Sunburst Lemon, I just love that color. And the Vermilion. 
And then you get into these very organic looking colors. I don't know, they're just all so fun. So let's flip these around and I'm actually going to get a clean towel. And because everything is so wet, I want to kind of um, cover over the tops of these, move these off my board. so that I can spray with water and then sprinkle. So again, let's make sure I'm not doing the wrong one. This is gamboge. Get that out. I've been known to pick up the wrong color. And I hope you can see there's not a lot of water on there. There's not a lot of puddling. And you can see where that hits the water, how it bursts into color. And look at the difference from where this one, I put the color down first and then sprayed to spraying with water and then sprinkling and only letting the crystals hit where those little spots of water were. really different. So that's why I really truly believe that going in and doing these swatches and learning how each pot reacts and as we get into some of the blues you're going to see how they react even more differently. But you're going to want to know this information because you can apply this now in your paintings. You can go in and say I want very airy leaves on a tree. So do I want to put the color down and then spray or do I want to put the spray and then color? So you can learn a lot from the swatches. I know a lot of times people are like, oh man, I hate doing swatches. It's so time consuming. and But I really think it's worth putting your time into it and getting to see and understand how each of these colors work. Those are done. Again, you can see the difference. One of the other things that I've learned over time is to walk away. When I'm doing especially trees and leaves, not to go in and keep messing with it, to walk away and let the colors do their thing. Let them kind of merge and come together in their own way and get that, um, it's more realistic on how a painting looks than going in and, you know, like, oh, I'm gonna go in and push these around. You can do that later and you can add more color but this way, it just really brightens everything up. So we have our lemon. And what do I do with my lemon? Here it is, way over here. Oh. And I'm getting a little bit of cross-contamination because it's on my board, it's in the air, but that's okay. You're going to all get that, under, kind of understand how this all works. And again, you can see the difference in how it looks and how it's reacting with the water. I'm running out of room for all of these color swatches. And this is yellow. And I know Lori's been playing around with the gel plate and coming up with mixed media with brush -o. You can see, let's 
let's let that go. It'll it'll merge out. And Lisa's saying walking away is the name of the game. It is. It really, really is. You learn so much more when you learn to walk away. Now, if I was doing these at home, I would just I would let them dry in between, you know, going in and spraying again and doing this. So what color do we have here? A sunburst. And the paper is really wet. Where I live, it's very humid. We live on the water, so it's extremely humid and it takes my papers a long time to dry. You can see, let's pick this one up, it's how this is bent a little bit, but when it totally dries, it will flatten out. That's what I love about Stonehenge Aqua Paper. And we have our yellow ochre. And look at those colors. How gorgeous to make a fall scene with the browns and the oranges and the yellows in there. This is our sandstone. Oh, you can see this one has vermilion, vermilion in it. Look at that, the red's coming out from cross-contamination. You can see how much lighter this is than this, but we're getting that intense vermilion also coming through in there, which is really pretty. And this is our orange. There's my orange. Here we go. And then you can see how that the crystals are staying more that they're not all dissolving in the water and bursting into color. You have it more so it's um, more spotted looking and that's really not the right word to say. But look at that. Look at those colors. And Lisa's talking about the sprinkle it. I want to get into that too in one of our um, Tuesday evening segments. So Colorcraft makes, and it's really not metallics, but it's kind of like metallics that um, you have copper, you have what they call flash, and they're really pretty cool. And they, they make really great additions to greeting cards and making different things pop. It's hard to get it on video. And I would love to talk with somebody that is a photographer that can actually tell me how to do a photo so that you can actually see that sparkle. Now, video works pretty good, but um, photos, I've had a hard time. So let me get these out of my way and let's grab some more colors. And how are we doing on time, everyone? And let's 
move these out. Next week, I think what we'll do is um, we'll go into the greens and the blues and purples next week. So how are we doing time-wise? Are we okay on time? So let's go ahead and do these. And if I don't write the names down, then I'm not going to be, but I'll, I tell you what, I'll have the names all written down next time. This is rose red. And I'm going to sprinkle first. Spray. And you noticed on this one, if don't know if you saw how I did it, I kind of did a sweeping motion with the spray. And it really pulled the colors out that way. So again, spraying differently also makes you know changes in in the outcome of how the brush oil works let's see i have terracotta but they're different colors different mixtures and if you look at them very really close you can see some of the different colors that are in each pot so Lisa what is the that will be fun oh metallic cover oh you've got the dick blick yes and this is alizarin crimson um, one of the things that Colorcraft did, they had a crimson color, lemon, and the alizarin crimson. And I'll do those side by side so you can see the difference. And I really love the alizarin I think more than I, I like the, just the crimson color. The alizarin crimson, you can see has purples in it. And hopefully that's showing up on the screen. It's a little pinker, I think. Now let's just do the crimson. And then we'll compare to see what they look like together. And I'm trying to sprinkle about the same amount. This is the alizarin crimson. And this is the regular crimson. Which do you prefer? I would love to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, and Lisa's saying that the alizarin, it's a cool magenta color in it, and it really is. And when I was doing my flamingos, I used a lot of the alizarin crimson more than I did the crimson. Yeah, Nancy said she likes the... Um, Oh, uh, this one better. I do too. This one, it's hard to tell. It's got, it has more of the purples in it, I think. And Louise likes the alizarin better too. But if you look at all of these, and we've not done all the colors yet, um, but 
look at the difference in the reds. They're so cool in how different they all are. And in some ways, and this is the terracotta. You well, know, no, it's not. It has more of an orange. This is getting to be more of a cooler red. This is a warmer red. So that's something, too, when you start painting, you want to, you know, know what do you want to show. Are you looking for warmer colors, cooler colors? You know, there's a lot that goes into planning out a painting. We're going to do brilliant red. So if I said to you, um, let's use some brilliant red, what color do you think that would be? Now this is something else that I wanted to show, and I'm glad it's something to keep in mind also when you're using brush -o. Where that clump was, you're going to have more color and it's going to spread more. But that kind of looks a little bit but as it spreads out you're getting more of the pink in it. So they're all so different in colors. And we have Scarlet which is another one of my favorite colors. And again, this one comes out a little larger clumps. You can see how the clumps are bigger. Again, when it hits that clump, it spreads out more. It's a little more intense in those areas. And then we have Burnt Sienna. Let's get that one out of the way. The Burnt Sienna has more of the violet in it. It makes it a little more on the brown side. I would say a little cooler than some of the other reds. So. Let's go back in and now dilute them down. And we'll go with the scarlet. Just turn that over. And bleed that out some. And we have our red, rose red, which look how that all bled in together. And it's not so organic looking. And here's our rose red. I used a little more water in that. Let's add just a little more. How many have made swatches already? Let 
Lori, did you? And you have all of the colors, right? Terracotta. When you made your swatches, did you do it the three different ways or did you just sprinkle? How did you do yours? Nancy, you did yours. I sure make a mess. <laughs> Oh, Lori, you did yours on the Kodak paper, yeah, or the yeah Kirkland paper, brilliant red, and that lays on top because it's non porous. One thing I want to give a shout out is to Lisa. She has a new class that's going to be starting on the Fine Art Cafe Academy. And if you like florals, you um, you have to see. Check out her class. It's you can see the the flowers that she's going to be uh, teaching in her class. It's just amazing. Yeah, Teresa is she's fabulous. Look how this is running down. Okay, we have our crimson. So Lori, you, you did, uh, what did you say, you, you, some of the colors didn't turn out well. Um, you did it just two ways. Did you shake and then um, add the water? Am I doing the right one? Crimson, yes. Even as I'm spreading that with water, you can see the purple that's coming through. Very different than the alizarin. Look how they're drying. This one is a lot pinker. A lot more pink in it. Let's see here. Here's my alizarin. Now, as you can see, look how fine that comes out compared to how some of the other ones came out in more of a uh, clumps. And look at that color. It's that beautiful color. So Lori, when you get time now, you're going to have to do it on watercolor paper and try out all the colors and see how it works out. Oh, Lisa, you put up thank you. There's her new class. It's coming soon. We're putting all the final touches on it. And then I also heard through the grapevine that we may have another artist coming on board that's on the Brush O Fun group and she's going to be offering a demo an animal it's so cool oh gee yeah I know I kind of let it out of the bag but look at the difference between how organic it is here and then how you can do the brush work All right, let's do the last step with these. And we'll spray them with water. Let's see. I need another towel. I buy these. These I get at like, I don't know if anybody has a Menards or a Home Depot. Um, this one is Scarlet. I buy like, get a dozen of these towels 
and I use them all the time. There's, they work out great. Some of these are washcloths too that I don't use anymore. Scarlet. Okay, so this side we're spraying. Let me get some of these out of the way. You can still see cross-contamination from when I sprinkle them. So that's something else to really think about is these spread. So um, you've got to be careful if you don't want these colors on an area of a painting because they do spread out. Look at all of that that's on here. Now let's spray, sprinkle this. And that was scarlet. So look at the difference in, in how it looks. And what's really cool is where the water from this part ran down and made the blossoms, I call them blossoms, in the diluted color that we put on. And our burnt sienna. again you can see the difference in how it's working on the paper and this is pretty cool where it's gone up into that light wash of color so I have color kind of like everywhere now rose red one of the things that I've found that takes brush -o out of clothing if you happen to um, do laundry and you get the red on your clothes is a product called awesome I get it at the we have dollar stores I get it at the dollar store and I spray that on and then do my laundry and that gets it out of my clothing it will wash out eventually but if you need it out like right away yeah, it is, Lisa. It's exciting when um, we get new classes and new demos up. And when we get new artists. And this is terracotta. I'm getting my colors all mixed up. Where'd my terracotta go? Here it is. And I think if I talk sweet enough to Lori, we can maybe get a mixed media class or two up on the Academy. Hi, Lori, please. Just sent you, oh, um, don't know if I can, is there a way I can share that? I don't know if I can share my screen. I don't know. Let me check. Let me finish these up and then I'll check to see if I can share my, my screen. Um, this is the Brilliant Red. My papers are really wet. And we have our regular crimson. Again, look how organic that looks. And then our last one for this evening, which is our alizarin. It's pretty wet, but we'll make it work.
cross-contamination of one of the colors that have a blue in it because I've not had blue out. But look at that. These crystals are so fine. But look how pretty and how that pops. And now it's bleeding down into the red. And they are, their surprise color bursts. It's just such a cool medium. Okay, that is the end of the color swatches for tonight. I have totally run out of room to let them dry. Um, do we have anybody, let me check quick and see if we have anybody on YouTube or if everybody moved over to... And we do. We have um, three people that are on YouTube. So let me see how I can. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but I want to see if I can show you the swatches that Lori sent. I don't think I can. Lori, I can't show them. Um, we'll post them somewhere. So, oh, Lori, you're on. Okay. Okay, yeah, please do share them on the group. So, do we have any questions? Um, anything anybody would like to know? We've been on for an hour. Again, next Tuesday, I'll be back on and we'll do the rest of the colors. Um, maybe we'll do some of the bleaching and then to show how they, they work with bleach. If anybody has any questions, I know over on YouTube you can't ask questions. So if you're a member of the Brush O' Fun group, tag me over there and ask away. I'm here in uh, the Zoom if anybody has any questions. And Lori's working on her gel plate and brush -o classes. See, I knew if I smiled, she would do it for me. She's such a sweetie. So, and two, if you have any requests for different classes, let us know and we will try and get demos up and different classes up. And um, don't forget also uh, that e the ebook that I wrote, you might want to check that out. To get that, you need to um, sign up for my, our newsletter for the Fine Art Cafe Academy. And that pops up in the Academy where you can fill that out. And then once you get it, if you don't want the newsletters, go ahead and just, you know, um, unsubscribe. That's fine. But we do send a weekly newsletter out. We've started that. And um, we do it with tips and tricks and motivation. So we're trying to keep it very um, more on the educational side of everything. And uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of anything else. We talked about Lisa's upcoming class. We talked about Lori is going to be doing a class. I hope, I hope. And... Uh, She's going to the, she says the gel press and the brush oak classes sound, oh, Lisa, yeah, Lisa says the gel press and the brush oak classes sound wonderful. Yeah, I have got to get me a gel plate. I was going to make one. I bought all of this gelatin and stuff and I was going to make one. I still should try and make one and see if those work. Lori, did those work as well as a purchased gel plate? If you could let us all know, that would be wonderful. So, does anybody have any questions before we you recommend buying a 5x7 to start? Okay, so don't make one. <laughs> you want me to buy one? Okay, I'll buy one. Um, anybody have a gel press or the jelly arts? Okay, all right, it's better. All right, well, I'll do that. I'll pick one up. Does anybody have any questions? And again, I apologize for not being able to have questions over on YouTube. We'll figure that out and see why that didn't work. 
but um, this was a lot of fun. I want to thank everybody for coming. Come back next Tuesday at 7.30. We'll play more with these um, fun, exasperating, frustrating, but fun brushos. Once you get a hang of it, they're just, they're amazing. Um, they're so much fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Come back. We're going to work our way into doing an actual painting as we go down this path, this journey of getting to understand these um, fun little crystals. If you have your own, um, just some watercolor paper, you don't have to use the Stonehenge Aqua. Do swatches. We'll have to figure out how we can share them so that people can see how they're doing. But if you're over in the Brush Hole Fun group on Facebook, share them there too. That would be great. Louise, I would love to have you back next Tuesday. Thank you, thank you. And um, but do swatches of your the colors that you have. We're, you, you can't believe how much you learn from doing these. It's just amazing. And then you'll eventually end up with a ring of all the colors. And you'll be able to say, hey, I want to use this color with this because when you look at these blues and this purple, you've got a lot of the same colors in it. It's really cool. It's a cool way to decide on how you want to do um, a painting. So again, thank you so much. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye, everybody. Have a good one. Thank you.